Today on Break Hard, Teresa Earnhardt gets a renewal on one of her DEI trademarks, and Dale Earnhardt is getting a four-part documentary series on Prime. All right, guys, welcome back to Break Hard. My name is Matt. An update on the Wicked Witch of the Southeast and her ongoing trademark renewal process for the DEI trademarks. Previously in a video, we talked about how she's up for renewal for the number one trademark and the number eight trademark. And she's gone and started the renewal process on the number one trademark. And this past weekend, May 11th, she was granted a renewal for that number through 2033. So she essentially has it for another decade. They had to go back and revise a few of the categories. They did take out like shirts and sweatshirts at one point. But for the most part, she will maintain the trademark on that number one, the one that Steve Park used, the one that Martin Shrex Jr. used as well. That number will remain with Therese Earnhardt. And some people continue to wonder why. And honestly, we don't have a really good reason why. Because there's no reason outside of this woman just loves to hold a grudge like she's Dave Portnoy. She's out here holding a grudge against Ty Norris, who's over at Trackhouse now. Which, Trackhouse is essentially just an iteration of DEI. If you track that down the line, and went from DEI to then became part of this Earnhardt Ganassi lineup, and then Ganassi, and now it's become Trackhouse, and that's how that number one has kind of stayed the course the whole way. And Teresa, I guess, probably listens to the Dale Jr. download, or at least her lawyers do, and gave her the snippets of it, because the Ty Norris episode probably pissed her off. So, just taking a wild guess, that that is probably why she wants to hold on to this number one. Because, after all, back in 2022, when Trackhouse tried to run those Coca-Cola throwback schemes like Dale and Dale did... They went ahead and sent a cease and desist to Trackhouse and said that you cannot use the number one in that font with this paint scheme, this and that. So Trackhouse, like we talked about before, just added that patented Trackhouse slash to the number. That is now a new brand, new identity, new design. So that is now Trackhouse's. Essentially, Teresa just wants to make sure that they can never use it by the sounds of it. So that's what's going on with that one. The biggest question now remains around the number eight and the trademark for that. Dale Jr.'s famous number eight. What's going on with that? Well, she started the renewal process for the number one back in November of 2023, and it took six months to get that renewal granted for her. She has not begun the renewal process for the number eight, and it appears that she might let it lapse the same way that she did with the number 15 and allowed Michael Waltrip to swoop in and grab that up for himself. Now, if she lets the number eight lapse, you have to assume that Dale Jr. and JRM are immediately going to storm in like they're raiding the beaches of Normandy to take that number eight trademark back because that is a cash cow in the waiting, especially with NASCAR's classics merch line out there. People would go crazy for it. I mean, they still sell a number of Dale Earnhardt items. I mean, he had the seventh best selling merch sales in 2023. And the guy's been dead since 2001. So you can see what the staying power and the amount of money that can be made with that Dale Earnhardt name and that Dale Earnhardt Jr. name will be just as profitable for them. So if Dale Jr. can swoop in and get that, that would be great. Now, what if Teresa Earnhardt wants to sit around, kick her feet back, and then come May 31st, or June 1st, or June 2nd, or even June 3rd, for that matter. She wants to go ahead and file to keep that trademark for her. Well, that is up to her. That is her prerogative. She can do that if she wants. That would be the ultimate tease. I don't think we've seen a tease that great since Jim and Pam. It's like, just get it over with already. We already know what's going to happen here. So if Teresa does let it lapse, so that would be absolutely massive like i said it allows dale jr to come in take that number eight he can rebrand the number eight in the xfinity series with that old number if he would like they can also offer a line of dale earnhardt jr throwback merchandise uh classic lines merchandise they can do so many different dale jr uh throwback themes with that everything about it would be perfect and maybe this is her olive branch to dale earnhardt jr to be like hey listen things haven't been great obviously we don't like each other but here is this if you would like it. It's certainly interesting that she has not started the renewal process on it yet. And don't get me wrong. <laughs> I almost 100% expect... <clears throat> and don't get me wrong. I would not be shocked at all. It would not even surprise me if she did wait until that final deadline day to go ahead and file for renewal of that number eight just to get everybody on their toes and and think have everybody think that they're going to get it so shout out to joey tartamella on twitter for keeping track of all this uh when june 3rd hits whether she renews it or whether it goes back into public domain for somebody else to go after uh joey and i will do a video about that because i mean it's a big story right forever she has gatekept the dei 
trademarks over there, whether that be Dale Earnhardt's name, the logos, the company's names, the numbers, everything about it. She has been so protective of that brand for so long. It now will be really interesting to see what happens if that is available for for people to once again go out there and and get. Moving on to another Earnhardt topic for the week. Prime Video announced on Tuesday that they will have a four-part Dale Earnhardt documentary series in 2025 to help kick off their NASCAR Cup Series coverage, which they also announced they will officially have the Coca-Cola 600 on Prime next year as well. That's not a shock to anybody. We already knew that was coming, but they formally announced it. Obviously, Dale Jr. is part of their broadcast team. And having a four-part Dale Earnhardt documentary series properly done is a massive win for the sport. I've seen a lot of people be like, can't we just let it go at this point? Dale's been gone for so long. Do we really need to try to squeeze more content out of this family, out of this driver, this and that? And while I agree with you, I don't think we've ever had an exhaustive documentary done about it. Yes, there have been good documentaries been done before, but this is going to be a four-part series. I, you have to imagine they're going to get every single person that they possibly can for this story. And it's going to be a background. It's going to be Dale Earnhardt coming up through the ranks, Dale Earnhardt and how he helped attract Fortune 500 companies to NASCAR and helped take NASCAR on from this regional sport in the American Southeast to becoming a nationwide sport as well. He obviously has a lot of things outside of the track that they can talk about, the family dynamic. Obviously, he went through three marriages, has three sets of kids with three different women. There's a whole lot of different things that go on with the Dale Earnhardt you know, legacy. It's not just the, it's not just these seven championships and the 76 career wins that go into it. There's a lot of things that are part of this guy's legacy. And I'm excited about it because one, as a four-part documentary series, we saw how you know, how what a really well done documentary can do in Formula One when they had it with the Senna doc, everybody that was universally loved. And the NBA with the last dance and the Bulls documentary as well. I would argue that the Patriots documentary on Apple TV Plus wasn't exactly what some people were expecting from it. But with NASCAR Production Studios, Tim Clark helping out with this, Ron Howard is helping direct, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Dirty Mo Media. I'm interested to see how all this plays out. Slightly concerned, because Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Dirty Mo are part of this, that we might get a certain slant. Obviously, every documentary has a slant to it. They want you to believe whatever the documentary maker you know believes in themselves. Not everything is 100% unbiased. Uh, so that's my only concern with it. But at the end of the day, I think it is a win for everybody. More NASCAR content's a good thing. Putting a major document documentary series on prime video ahead of having you know one of the biggest races of the year a crown jewel event in the coke 600 again is a win-win if that helps draw in some different viewers great prime video has 200 million subscribers to it for you know reference there's 65 million cable subscribers in the united states so essentially three times as many people have access to prime video than they do cable so this could really help put the sport in front of people that haven't traditionally watched NASCAR before. And I honestly think that's a big win for, for everybody, not only the sport, but the fans as well, as they try to capture a younger audience. So I think it's a win-win. We'll have to wait and see what happens with the Teresa DEI trademarks as that continues to go on. I'm holding out hope. I want to remain optimistic that she's going to let the eight laps and, you know, I can head over to Dale Jr. if he wants it at this point. And I'm excited for the documentary as well. So let me know in the comments what you think about both topics. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard. Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.